inside the last 19 minutes of the Sportsmax Zone for this Thursday. We are switching to cricket now as day two action in round four of the West Indies Championship concluded across three venues a short while ago. Well, three countries. We begin our recap at Sabina Park where the Jamaica Scorpions are facing the West Indies Academy team. Ricardo Chambers is on location. Yeah, thank you so much, Lance and Mariah. Well, it's been another enthralling day of cricket here at Sabina Park, the West Indies Academy, taking on the Jamaica Scorpions. Yesterday's opening day, we had 344 runs scored and 10 wickets taken. Today, we have, we, we've seen 306 runs scored and 7 wickets taken. And the Jamaica Scorpions have batted out an entire day for the first time this campaign, so they will be relatively pleased about that. Let's tell you about the situation of this game. The Jamaica Scorpions resumed their first innings on 20 without loss. Carlos Brown and Kurt McKenzie both on 10 in response to the 324 made by the West Indies Academy in their first innings. And the Scorpions getting to 326 for 7 at the close of day 2. They lead by 2 runs. They have been led by the captain Brandon King who top scored with 77 from 100 and 32 deliveries. We'll tell you more about his innings later. Leroy Lug had a well-played 64 and then Pete Salmon with some amount of attritional agility getting uh, some 55 not out. Make that 60 not out from 157 deliveries and uh, bowling for the West Indies Academy. Uh, there was a 3 for 85 for Joshua Bishop. He bowled 27 overs to Today in tandem with Ashmead Ned, who bowled 28 overs and had 1 4 66 to close the day. Let's quickly get in a word from Joshua Bishop, who had three wickets and three very key wickets as well, including Brandon King and Leroy Lug. He also had Abhijay Mansing, who is a dangerous customer. And Joshua, first of all, talk me through your performance today and just how tough it was out there for the bowlers. Well, it was very tough today. Um, Leroy Lug played a very good innings, Brandon King as well, and Pete Salmon at the end. So we just had to just stick to our plans and just fight it out. How do you find that the pitch is playing? Oh, it's very good, very good for batting. So you just have to vary your pace and just have to stick with it straight through. 326 for seven is what the Scorpions are at this stage, entering day number three. How do you feel about the position of this game? Well, I feel very confident in the position that we're in. Just tomorrow, we just have to come and wrap up, wrap up the um, tail, not trying to get and get a very big lead. All the best. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Joshua Bishop, there are 3 4 85 from his 27 overs today for the West Indies Academy. Let's get a quick word in with Leroy Lug, who scored 64 for the Jamaica Scorpions. Leroy Lug, very important innings for you today in the Jamaica Scorpions side, second game this season. Talk to me about the performance. Well, I'm pretty pleased with the performance. Um, I just went out there and Try to play straight as possible because the pitch is a good pitch. So I was just try to play straight and, and play each ball and, and it's merit. Yeah, just before lunch, um, you had an over where you went for a big hit. Um, I think it was off Ashmead Ned. You missed it. Then you had a word with Brandon King. And the next two deliveries, one hit over mid on for four. And then the other one through mid wicket. And the fielders probably felt they had a slight chance. Talk to me about what the conversation was with your captain. Um, well, King just came down to me and he told me that um, it's the last over for lunch, so I should just um, play safe cricket. But um, the ball was there and the field was in, so I just took my chances. Yeah. How do you feel about how you got out getting caught on the long on boundary at a stage where it looked as if you were on course to get a big one? Um, I'm, I'm really, really disappointed, even though no excuses still, but I was trying to take the ball over um, long off, um, mid off. But the ball to the inside of the, the edge of the bat and went down to long on. But I'm really disappointed. You're naturally an aggressive player. How difficult is it um, to curb that natural instinct and the fact that you also know that you have the ability to clear the ropes? Um, it can be good and it can be bad. Kind of difficult, but I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. It's just that me to pick um, the, 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 the bad balls and be selective. And I'm whenever, whenever I'm about it, Well, good knock today and all the best going forward. Thank you very much. Yeah, Leroy Lug there for the Jamaica Scorpions getting 64.
today. It was a very good innings from Leroy Lug because he put on a 103-run fourth-wicket partnership with his captain Brandon King. The Scorpions were in trouble early. They were 67 for three within the first hour of play. They had gotten off to a really good start, a 59 run opening stand between Carlos Brown and uh, Kurt McKenzie. Kurt McKenzie was brilliantly caught by captain Naeem Young at extra cover for 29 and uh, then Carlos Brown was third to go when the score was on 67. I want to talk you quickly though through Brandon King's innings because I thought it was an excellent knock, one in which the head of selectors for the West Indies test team um, might be pleased that I think everyone here at Savannah Park would be a little bit disappointed that he didn't go on to make a century. He started out slowly when he was at the wicket with Leroy Lug in that 103 run partnership he played very responsible cricket. Leroy Lug was the man going and Brandon King was the one willing to rotate strike, pick up the singles and sure Leroy Lug had most of the strike. His 50 came up off 95 deliveries and he ended up on 77 from 132 deliveries. So the next 27 runs came up off 37 deliveries he increased the scoring rate he would be very disappointed the way he got out looking to hit the ball over mid wicket and got bold um, of uh, Joshua Bishop but I thought for the most part it was an extremely responsible knock and this is if this is what we're to expect from Brandon King going forward in this competition then yeah maybe he does have a very good good future in red ball cricket. Remember, he's no slouch in red ball cricket. He averages 34.95 uh, coming into this match in first class cricket with three um, centuries. Today was his 15th first class half century and sadly it was not a fourth for him. Pete Salmon also played a very good knock for the Jamaica Scorpions ending not out. Um, he got a chance when he was on nine so he took full advantage of that one to give the Scorpions a two-run lead at the end of the day. I also quickly have to tell you about Jermaine Blackwood who has been having a torrid tournament and maybe it's been even worse for this match. Earlier this week it was announced that he would no longer be the Jamaica Scorpions captain, that he would be relieved of those duties. Brandon King took charge. Coming into this match Blackwood scored 56 runs in five innings. After his duck today he went LBW of Kadeem Alain and after that duck today, that's 56 runs now in six innings. He had a, a terrible first day as well, putting down two chances at slip. And it's not going well for Jermaine Blackwood, the ex-West Indies red ball captain looking to get back into the West Indies side but at 32 years old and how terrible this season has gone you just can't see that at the moment unless he does something extremely special from this point on that's about it from Sabina Park then a quick recap of where we are Jamaica Scorpions 326 for 7 having resumed a 2 on 20 without loss in response to 324 made by the West Indies Academy the Scorpions lead by two runs Lance and Mariah. Yeah, thanks, Ricardo. Good to hear from Joshua Bishop and uh, Leroy Log, the, some of the top performers in, in play today. Uh, Log had some experience playing in Barbados for Maple, I think it was, uh, a few years ago, and getting an opportunity in regional cricket now and trying to um, grab the opportunity with both hands. Let's head now to Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad and Tobago, where Tion Webster's unbeaten 100, 107, led the TNT Red Force to 103 run first innings lead over the Windwards Volcanoes and uh, before the Volcanoes batted a second time. Kenneth Denver, the Vincentian off spinner, 5 for 63 as uh, the TNT Red Force scored 294 in reply to the Windwards, 191 all out. And the Windwards in their second innings now, 68 for two. Uh, Jeremy Solizano, the TNT batsman, um, 30 not out. Car PR, one for seven so far. Uh, so the Volcanoes trail by 35 runs at the moment. <laughs> Still in Trinidad and Tobago where the Leewards Hurricanes and the combined campuses and colleges are in action at the Sir Frank Worrell Memorial Ground. Uh, Kyron Powell's knock of uh, 114 uh, brought the Leewards Hurricanes within 14 runs of the CC's first inning score of uh, 273. Uh, so 259 all out the Leewards Hurricanes, replying to the 273 there. Romari Graves, the Barbadian off spinner, with 5 for 63 against Kyron Powell's 114. The combined campuses and colleges in their second innings, 76 for 3, with Sadiq Henry 32 not out, and Jeremiah Louis 
two for 16 so far. So at Stumps on day two, the CCC leading by 90 runs. So some good tight cricket, uh, Mariah, in these matches. And good to see some five-wicket holes today at the Coolidge ground, the Ghana Harpy Eagles, 436 so out. Vera Sami Permal with a career best first innings 90 against Kimar Roach, two for 52. And the Barbados Pride struggling at 59 for three. Uh, in reply, so a massive total there by the Guyana Harpy Eagles enjoying their best game of the tournament so far. Their title defense hasn't been going very well for them, but 436, a huge total there. And uh, Permal getting runs today, yeah. 10 short of 100. We spoke of hundreds for Kyron Powell and Tion Webster, and a five wicket holds for Romario Graves and. Uh, there was a five-wicket hole as well for Anderson Phillip yesterday. Yes. We, we spoke about that. But there was another five-wicket hole today that I'll mention in just a moment. But uh, a lot of players um, applying themselves in this uh, regional 4-day championship and uh, getting among the runs and wickets. Yeah, and I'm so happy because we had a lot of half centuries, a lot of players, although they didn't go on to make the century because you mentioned a couple of them, but even Kevin Sinclair, that 72, Kevlon Anderson, that 87. I feel like all of this is worth mentioning, Lance, because, you know, for quite some time, whenever we talk West Indies cricket, we always talk about the problems associated with the batting. So for me, the bowling, I never really worry too much about. But it's just a sigh of relief to see them getting runs on their bat. Yeah. Looking forward to see some more sentries moving forward. Yeah, so stumps on day two there. So Romario Graves and uh, Kenneth Denver were the off spinners that got five wicket holds today. We go to break. Interactive is next on the other side of the break.